That, my friend, is the sound of a Glock 19. Andrew Kramer here, and in this tutorial, we are gonna be creating realistic muzzle fire. So let's go ahead and get started. I have this shot of this very, very shady character. Wait a second. This guy looks familiar. Anyway, this very shady looking character coming out and unloading his uh, clip here. Now, as you can see, there is an actual action on this gun as it's fired. And if I hit LL, we can also see that there is sound effects embedded into this video. So we'll use that to kind of sync up our animation and such. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I want to do is put markers at every point in time where the muzzle fire should take place. So if I go through here, I can see... Okay, it kicks back right there. Now, how the gun works essentially, and this is usually handguns, is there's going to be an explosion at this point in time. At the next frame, the gun kicks back, moves forward, loads the next bullet into the chamber, then the weapon is ready to be fired again. Now this is a semi-automatic, so the trigger has to be pulled every time the gun will shoot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put markers at every frame just before the gun kicks back. So at this point in time, I'm gonna select the layer and hit star to put a marker, then it kicks. We'll move forward again, just before it, star and so forth. We'll just go down the line here. By the way, this is an airsoft gun that is a replica. Um, I do want to point out one thing. Um, I know you guys are probably thinking, wow, I'm going get, to get going on this. It sounds like a fun thing. Well, anyway, airsoft guns, replica guns, guns that are even remotely realistic, unless they're hot pink and make laser sound effects, uh, it's highly recommended that you're very careful if you're attempting to create this type of effect. Um, people in a public environment or anywhere where... You know, you, you don't have complete control. People may not understand what's going on, and there can be a lot of problems. So just be extremely careful. This is a very, very serious thing anytime you're using any firearms or weapons. So definitely take that into consideration when you're uh, thinking about your next movie. With that said, let's move on to the next step. And in the next step, we're going to be creating the muzzle fire. So I'm going to create a new solid. We're going to make it white. I'm going to choose OK. Now I'm going to lower the opacity of this clip. I'm going to hit T and lower the opacity to 50%. And I'm going to select the layer, hit Return, call this Fire. And what we're going to do is kind of create a muzzle fire. So I'm going to zoom in here, take the pen tool, and just draw a, uh, a muzzle fire. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, just, you know, get get something down there, and you can always adjust the points and uh, get something uh, maybe that you wanted to, but accidentally didn't get. So anyway, that looks pretty darn good. Now, let's take the layer, hit T again, and let's bring the opacity back up to 100%, and let's toggle the masks in the monitor off, and... Okay, so you're thinking to yourself, well, this looks pretty good, but you know, I didn't pay good money for a tutorial to show me how to draw an outline of a muzzle fire. Well, you're right. So let's take this layer, first of all, and let's hit Alt, begin bracket, and while holding down Alt, end bracket. And that will make this layer one frame long, as you can see. And there's a few more steps to this. So with the layer selected, I'm going to choose Effects, Blur, CC, Radial, Fast Blur. And as you can see, we get this kind of blurry kind of fiery effect here but what we want to do is take this center point and put it just behind the gun here and that way the bullet and the action is moving in this direction okay so now I'm going to choose effect stylize glow and we're going to create a more orange look so I'm going to click color B change it to an orange change the glow to be based on the alpha channel and composite the original on top then I'm going to increase the intensity to about 2, and the radius about 67, it seems. Okay, so that right there looks pretty good. Now it's pretty uniform, so let's bring up our mask again, and let's just kind of make this one longer and make this one 
a little bit longer. Also, we can change the color of the mask. If we hit M, we can right click on this yellow and change it to an easier to see color, maybe like a blue. And that way you can see the mask a little bit easier while you're working with it. But anyway, that was the idea. You want to just give it something a little bit more random and uh, less uniform because, of course, fire is, uh, is furious or such. Now, this is good, but it's not great. Let's, uh, let's take it another step forward. Now, with the layer selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Distort, Turbulent, Displace. And what this is going to do is create kind of a fractally noise displacement. So, as you can see, the default value uh, isn't quite what we want. So, let's see if we can uh, enhance this a little bit better. All right, first of all, I'm going to change the amount of the displacement to a little bit less, to say about 30. And I'm going to make the size of it very, very small so that we can kind of see the, the grain and the grunge of it. So I'm going to make the size of this 10. And the complexity, so the detail, I want to improve that and make that about 6. So as you can see, it's kind of a, a more of a fiery effect here. Now, now, what's happening is the radial blur is taking place. Then this glow, which adds the orange. Then the displacement here, which adds the kind of randomness here. Now... If we switch the order of these things, we can get kind of a different look. So if I take this turbulent displace and put it before the radial blur here in the stack, you'll see that the edges just kind of get noisy, but the overall effect seems to be the same. So if we look here, here's our layer. We turn on the displacement, kind of gives it a random edge. Radial fast blur, kind of the, the motion as it goes forward, and the glow on top of that. Well, what I want to do is actually get the best of both those worlds. So I'm going to duplicate the turbulent displace. I'm going to select it, control D, and then take this second instance and drag it to below the glow. And as you can see, now it's on top. Then I can just bring this amount down to about 26, just so it's not as intense. Maybe the size of it, bring that down even to about six. Okay. So as you can see, that looks a lot better. And if our effect just gets a little too white or we want to make it a little bit smaller, we can go into the mask properties, MM, to see all of them. And we can shrink the expansion to just get kind of a, a different look, um, as you can see. So play around with that. Um, what I'm actually going to do is just go in here and uh, change a few of the points and just bring them a little bit closer together. Okay, so, uh, you know, you don't have to be an artist to, uh, to get this to look right, but you do want the points to be kind of shooting away from the muzzle here. So, anyway, that, I think, looks pretty good. Um, it's a handgun, so it wouldn't be an extremely large muzzle fire. So, you know, I can, I can believe this. You know, it is kind of a medium shot here on the weapon. Now, let's go ahead and take this another step forward. So, if we watch it really quick, if I just toggle through the frames... You see the gun is ready, the trigger is pulled, the gun kicks back, and it fires. Now, I'm just going to move this forward one frame to our marker, and you can see the gun kicks immediately after the fire goes on, and then back to its original state. So we want to actually uh, add to this muzzle fire and create a new solid. So I'm going to choose New Solid. And this time I'm going to make it like an orangish color, maybe like that, okay. And with the rectangle mask tool, I'm just going to draw a box around most of the image, but not the entire image. Then I'm going to hit F to bring up the feather properties and feather this, about 180, 190 here. And then I'm going to change the transfer mode to add. Then I'm going to lower the opacity to 25. Zoom in here, see how that looks. And then select the layer, Alt, Begin Bracket, then End Bracket, and that'll shrink it down to one frame. So as you can see, uh, we get pretty decent effect here. And uh, maybe we'll lower the opacity a little bit more, maybe about 20. Yeah, that looks, that looks a lot better. Okay, now what do we have to do next? Well, we have uh, several, several fires going on here. So now we have to just duplicate this 
over this entire period here. So what I'm going to do is uh, just duplicate these two layers. Uh, I'm going to select them both, Control D. Then I'm going to move forward to the point in time, and I'm going to hit Begin Bracket. And that moves the input points to that point in time where my cursor is. I'm going to do the same thing, duplicate these layers, go forward to this point, Begin Bracket. Duplicate these, go forward, begin bracket. Duplicate these, go forward, begin bracket. So they're kind of in this crazy random order. I'm just going to go ahead and move this down here and move this right here. That way they just have some sort of uniformity. Okay, now what I would probably do is go into every other one of these and randomize the motion of this. You know, obviously the gun's being fired and the muzzle fires are not going to be exactly the same. And likewise, we want to make sure the muzzle fire is coming out of the place where it probably should, since the gun does move slightly as it's being fired. So I'm just going to go to each point in time and just line it up. Oops. Select the layer and then just move it there. And then just randomize the motion by changing a few of the points. You know, moving them out, moving them in, moving them back. If you double click on one of the points, you get the bounding box and you can also shrink it down. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview this. So I'm going to open this up, I'm going to hit zero. Okay, now you may see the frames aren't being recorded at as high frame rate as I'm probably seeing, and that's just because I have to turn down the acceleration while I'm screen recording here. We have this other thing in the project window that is the smoke, and what we're going to do is put this underneath our fire, but on top of our layer here. And okay, this looks pretty realistic, but maybe we can enhance it a little bit. So this is actually rendered out of Particle Illusion again, and we're just going to take this, what it is right now, and just work with it. So what I'm going to do is go to our first muzzle fire, and I'm going to line up this smoke. And what I'm going to do is basically turn the opacity down, say to about 15, and I'm going to change the transfer mode to add. And let me just go ahead and turn on just the Glock and the smoke layer by turning on the solo switch. And then taking this layer and just moving the smoke to come right out of the barrel here and I'm going to scale it down zoom in here and uh, yeah now I'm pretty sure this smoke if I preview this is a little too fast as you can see it's really coming out of there uh, we want it to be a little bit slower than that so I'm going to line it up with our first muzzle fire and I'm going to hit Alt Begin Bracket to uh, trim it off at the first point there. And I'm going to go to Layer Time Stretch and we're going to stretch it say about 200%. Then I'm going to go to Layer Frame Blending and turn on Frame Mix and that will blend the layers together. And for this particular uh, effect that will work just fine and give us good render times. So now we watch it and we see the smoke comes out as the weapon is being fired. Now let's go and turn our other layers back on by unsoloing these layers and let's go and preview this. Okay so as you can see it's a pretty cool effect and uh, definitely makes for a very authentic feel. So uh, this is just a, you know, a uh, $50 airsoft gun and I think we've came up with a pretty cool effect. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Andrew Kramer.